Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. I'm Steve. And I'm Scott. Together, we are Backyard Musings, the science and technology channel, Weird Science. Yep, and we've got an odd one uh, for you today involved in some kind of a plant, but we're going to go with it. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. A research group led by Dr. Ryoshiro Kasahara has discovered a new plant tissue essential for seed formation, which will be named in his honor. That's pretty cool. A research team at Nagoya University in Japan, again, Japan, has identified a previously unknown plant tissue that plays a crucial role in forming seeds. This marks the first time in 160 years that scientists have documented a newly recognized plant tissue. The finding opens the door to an entirely new research area and has already shown real world potential. This is crazy. We're in the 21st century, right? We are we're discovering something crazy yep. as the group has used the discovery to boost yields of major crops, such as rice. The study appears in the journal current biology on April 7th, 2025. Would you like to know more? Scientists have known since 2005 that fertilization must occur for the developing seed body called the hypocotyl uh, to draw nutrients from the mother's tissue of the plant. Gaining insight into how plants recognize when fertilization has succeeded is co considered important for improving crop productivity during breeding efforts. You know, we talk about plants and we never talk about breeding. This is... Right way new for me. This is pretty cool. The team directed by Ryoshiro Kasahara and Michitaka Noraguchi entered, encountered the new tissue unexpectedly. That often that's the case. Isn't that, wasn't that the case of penicillin? Yes. Kasahara had been staining seeds to observe the buildup of cal calios, a waxy substance often examined for its role in fertilization as part of an effort to confirm earlier research. During this work, he came across something surprising. Quote, plants fertilize by the insertion of a pollen tube. So most scientists are only interested in the place where this occurs. However, we found signals on the opposite side too, he said. Going on with the quote, nobody was looking where I was looking. I remember being surprised, especially when we realized that this signal was particularly strong when fertilization failed. Hmm. Huh. Further analysis revealed a distinctive rabbit-shaped tissue structure that functions as a gateway. This structure, named the Kasahara Gateway, in honor of its discoverer, represents the first new plant tissue identified since the mid-19th century, mid-1800s. Dang. Yeah. The signal Kasahara observed and resulted from callose deposits, which blocks the flow of nutrients and hormones into unfertilized seeds. Closure of the gateway gateways led to the seeds not receiving nutrients and dying. The researchers termed this the closed state. On the other hand, when fertilization occurs, the hypocotyl de detects the success and dissolves the callus, allowing nutrients to flow into the seed and enabling growth. The research called the researchers call this the open state. How cool. Quote, when the flow of nutrients was compared between successfully fertilized and unsuccessful embryos, it was found that the inflow of nutrients was observed only in the successful embryos, whereas it was completely blocked in the unsuccessful ones, hmm. Kassar explained. This limits the amount of resources wasted on unviable seeds. The gateway's ability to switch between open and closed states suggested genetic regulation. The researchers examined fertilized plant uh, hypocotyls to identify potential genetic controls. They identify a gene called ATBG underscore PPAP that was upregulated exclusively in fertilized hypocotyls and identified its role in dissolving calios. Huh. When they modify hypocotyls to express, to over express ATBG underscore PPAP, that sounds so Whatever the heck that is. <laughs> PPAP. The gateway, uh, it's a PPAP, so I call it PPAP. The gateway remained permanently in the open gate state, increasing nutrient uptake. Quote, this led us to the realization that keeping the gateway permanently open could enlarge seeds, Kasahara said. When we tested this theory with rice seeds, we made seeds that were 9% bigger 
with seeds from other species, we succeeded in increases of as much as 16 and a half percent. Their findings represent a significant advancement in seed enhancement and plant breeding. Maintaining a permanently open state could substantially increase yields of important crops. Kashar also believes that these findings will enhance outstanding, uh, uh, excuse me, enhance understanding of plant evolution, particularly why flowering plants, uh, I'm not even going to go there, angiosperms, dominate today's flora. Since, an, oops, hold on, technical difficulty, just lost my screen. Uh, since an unfertilized hypocotyl cannot become a seed in the first place, feeding it would be wasteful for the plant. Uh, that was a quote by Kashahara. Uh, therefore, an angiosperms may have been able to survive until modern times by feeding the embryo body using this mechanism to ensure that they only give resources to fertilized seeds, unquote. So... Yeah. This, this is, I think it's exciting. I mean, I'm not a plant guy or a gardener. I'll bet you, uh, I'll, I'll bet you, uh, Pinball will find this really fascinating because he's a gardener. He likes to garden. Yep. 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 Maybe I'll okay. send it to him. All right, folks. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you tomorrow. Tomorrow? No. Monday. Uh, enjoy your yeah, Sabbath. Enjoy your Sabbath. Yep. <laughs> All right. We'll see you. Take care, everyone. Thanks.